frankly, that's one of the main reasons we, we were able in February of last year to demonstrate a working prototype, which enabled us to take celodots and put them on breast cancer tissue and have them light up, as opposed to the negative control where normal breast tissue did not light up. All right. Now, we demonstrated that in uh, February of last year, and the Dow went down to, what was it, 6,500 a couple of weeks later. So, uh, you know, God puts adversity in your path for a reason. I don't always know, you know why, but certainly he's blessed our efforts today. So I'm sitting there in the worst market we've seen in quite a while. We've got a working prototype. Uh, I was blessed to be selected to go present to New York City's uh, Life Science Venture Capital Act uh, presentation for VCs. So I'm in the middle of the financial district on a stage that's very rare. Nobody from the Southeast had presented for quite a while. And the VCs in the crowd are all kind of you know, half-lidded. <laughs> They're all in shell shock. The limited partners aren't answering the calls. You, you probably remember what it was like about a year ago. It's gotten substantially better, but it was really bad then. We were able to get some traction, but basically they said, look, this is very exciting. And a year ago, you might have had an opportunity to go into due diligence, but frankly, right now, you've got to de-risk this a little more. How many of you all talked to VC and heard that term? You've got to de-risk it. Uh, I hear extend runway, right? De-risk. So I figured we'd de-risk it quite a bit. We'd be able to target, you know, working prototype. Did you see the Petri dish? It's very nice. They said, well, the Petri dish is really nice. Having cells in a, I want to see you get on human tissue. All right, well, you don't just walk along. Well, you might find it in some segments of some cities, human tissue on the street. Uh, but it's not something that you want to work on. Um, so we had to go back and say to our partners, look, we need to have access under a control basis to human tissue. Um, so we had to go through an IRB proposal. Fortunately, we had a great relation starting with the Greenville Hospital System. And so I had an incentive, that, an indication that that was going to work. And we're actually now in a, uh, a clinical trial where women uh, pre-approve that some of the tissue that's taken when they do lumpectomies for breast conservation surgery, some of that tissue is used for medical research. And the real blessing there is we get cancerous tissue and non-cancerous tissue from the same patient so that the genomics are all the same and you can do the positive negative controls. It's all really great. But looking back, if I'd have stuck hard and fast to that line, we probably would be out of business right now because the capital was, was pretty tight and we'd have been, with the money that we had raised, unless things had substantively changed, we probably would have gone out of business. Um, about that time, um, April of last year, March, April of last year, I was told that there was a British diagnostics company coming in to the U.S. looking for a place to put a U.S. headquarters. Um, really, then they had a choice. It felt like the dog with the bone that looks down in the water <laughs> and he reaches to get the other bone and drops it in the water and then you got nothing. Um, <laughs> I had a board of advisors, one of whom is uh, sitting here, and I, I went to them. Mr. Cornelius, if you kind of would wave your hand. Several folks have helped us all along the way, just like Tom. Um, and I said, look, we've got this great opportunity. This company's coming into town. You know, I had progressive conversations by the time I took it to the board. But I sat down with them and realized we had narrowed just to one target. John and I have talked about this all over and over. Narrow, narrow, narrow. Pick your focus and get across the chasm. If you ever read Cross, Crossing the Chasm, it's a great book. All the VCs will put it in your hand as soon as you get to funding. But hopefully you've read it before they come talk to you. Um, the point is, you, you focus all your resources to, to get across that, that chasm or like a D-Day invasion, and once you've got a beachhead, then you can expand. So we had gone down, 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 and we had a great opportunity, but we weren't really seeing markets that were supportive of the capital needs that we had. So when I heard these guys were coming in, number one, I was interested in landing them in South Carolina. It was an international diagnostics firm that was very well regarded, fast growing, uh, well into revenue, had acquired three companies in six months prior to talking to me. Um, just on a rocket ride. I wanted to get them in South Carolina because uh, this is the kind of company we want to, to attract. But then I realized they actually have a whole range of uh, genetic biomarkers already in their IP portfolio. They already have assay developers who we were, we were working with USC to, to be able to bioconjugate and get stuff onto targets. But there's a different deal of developing an assay so it works every time and you can translate that to a medical environment. Uh, these guys had all the assay developers, already had a track record of success in the space. Plus, they're selling into 130 countries worldwide, uh, kits that they've already got in place. And lastly, they've got a, what's called a CLIA Services Lab in Cambridge in the UK that had 70% of the personalized medicine market from the government-controlled healthcare system. So they already had demonstrated capability to work in a government-controlled uh, healthcare system with a commanding market share. And all of the flags in my head started waving saying, well, Celadots couldn't just go to one kit, and they could go to all kinds of kits. And not only that, it could go into tests that are called lab-developed tests, 
inside the Clio Lab in Cambridge. And guess what? They're planning on putting one right here in South Carolina because we were fortunate enough to merge our businesses in, in December. Um, so now I'm the president of uh, Lab 21, the headquarters of the U.S. operation. We've nearly finished our design uh, of our Clio Services Lab in Grable. Um, the Sela dots are now being considered by collaborators worldwide in addition to our collaborators here. Uh, there was a conversational point that Tom mentioned about the MUSC connection. Remember, we had the dot, we bioconjugated so it could actually attach to cancer, breast cancer. But we were using a commercially available biomarker that wasn't uh, uh, all that uh, impressive or robust. It just showed that it could be done. We knew that we had to have a biomarker that was highly selective and highly specific to cancer. And we really wanted to have one that was in our um, IP control so we'd have a full construct dot through the conjugation to the biomarker. So the kit was uh, nicely vertically integrated. We had the whole uh, enchilada. We had to pay somebody else uh, to be able to take their biomarker in. So in the last days of CELA, I was going down to MUSC and talking with them about some particular biomarkers. And little did I know, Lab 21 was sitting in the office next door and also talking to them about a whole host of other biomarkers. So when we got to the right point during the due diligence, and I got a full disclosure of everything they were doing, I'm like, we were next door to each other. Isn't this exciting? We can take a CELA dot now and tag it on to a whole host of new biomarkers that are being invented and discovered, if you will, at MUSC. And now, because of finding it in a venture and working with folks like Tom and get it, this whole opportunity set has opened up for us. And, you know, there's no guarantees of success, but we've certainly been blessed with a lot of opportunity. So I just kind of wanted to give you a sense of really this meandering path. I mean, nobody could have figured we'd end up where we are now. And frankly, if I look forward 10 more years, it's probably another uh, torturous path. But it's one that I think would only have happened through the cooperation and collaboration um, at USC. That was the major, um, if you will, accelerator in the process of our company's history.